It was 2013, and I was road tripping out in the American Southwest. I was lucky enough to get a car with Sirius satellite radio, which meant even in the most remote locales of the country, I was able to listen to pretty much whatever I wanted. So there I was, in Canyonlands National Park, far, far away from the only civilization in Moab, when a hilarious comedian by the name of Amy Schumer came on the air. She was funny. She was hilarious. She made my trip all that much more enjoyable. And I took a note in my little notepad to look her up when I returned home. But, like many items on my to-do list, I forgot to look her up. And whereas normally this would mean the name Amy Schumer would likely forever be lost on a piece of paper as I unconsciously threw it in the garbage, I would never forget Amy Schumer. Because at about that same time, the traditional media, social media, alternative media, print media, and Hollywood went gangbusters promoting the hell out of Amy Schumer, ne'er letting me forget this woman existed. Oddly, however, it wasn't her comedy as much as it just was, well, her they were promoting. Not that she had done anything amazing, aside from her comedy, but quite the opposite. She was just your average, obese American woman, and the media had launched a cognizant and purposeful campaign blitz celebrating that fact. She was Amy Schumer. She was large and in charge. She was body positive. And she's all about feminism. Three years later, neither you nor I can go a week without seeing her on some social media meme or on the cover of a trashy grocery store magazine or some other such theatrics blasted over the internet. She's Amy Schumer, and by God, she's overweight, and she's in your face about it, and we're going to celebrate this fact. Ha! Naturally, this in-your-face 24-7 Amy Schumer channel has ruffled the feathers of conservatives, libertarians, or people who just don't like being told what they should and should not find attractive. But in addition to this intended and planned revulsion, a common question coming from my conservative and libertarian circles, as well as some associates of mine on the left, is, why the hell is Amy Schumer so popular? And it is here a very important lesson lies for us all, regardless of politics. So strap in, lieutenants, and pour yourselves a stiff one, because in understanding why Amy Schumer is so popular, you will be able to attain an element of serenity and calm previously not had before. By all measures of sanity and logic, Amy Schumer should be popular because of her comedy and humor. My hatred for her does not blind me to the fact that she is an incredibly talented comedian and is one of the funniest people I've heard. But if you look at nearly all of the media, attention, and hype Schumer has received in the past couple of years, it has not been to promote her comedy, her humor, or her literary works, but rather push a political agenda, namely the one of fat acceptance. And, to a larger extent, feminism. A sane and logical mind would ask, what gives? Why would she abandon her true talent of humor to become just another harpy harping on fat acceptance and feminism? The market is flooded with such women, and it certainly is not as rewarding as being a comedian. But while you're focusing on her talent as a humorist and the general hatred that mars the world of feminism, what you fail to see is a market that is much larger than the comedy market, and one that is much more profitable. Pretty Lies Currently, the largest industry in the world is government. Governments are the largest organizations by far. They are the largest consumers of resources, and they employ the most amount of people. But in Western governments in particular, the primary service they provide is not defense, roads, infrastructure, cops, or judicial systems, but rather pretty lies. And these lies are told with the sole purpose of getting corrupt politicians re-elected so they can avoid real jobs in the real world slash private sector. You're not poor because you had six children from four different fathers. You're poor because you're black and whitey hates you. You're not making 76% of what men make because you majored in French lesbian communication studies. You're making 76% of what men make because sexism. And you're not an overpaid union member who drove jobs overseas with your bloated pay. You're a victim of the evil corporations, man. This racket is a multi-trillion dollar industry and is the largest scam ran on all of humanity. Except for religion. It is no coincidence that the predecessor to government was religion. 
previous to those evil white males introducing secular government and ending the pointless deaths caused by theocracies, religion was the state and maintained this age-long, multi-trillion dollar racket by providing the same service modern-day governments do. Pretty lies. There's an afterlife. You're immortal. You're all going to heaven. You're the chosen ones. You are superior to non-believers. You have the right to kill them all and take their stuff. It's the same thing governments do today, but with God and immortality is the prominent lies. But while you'd think religion and governments have a duopoly on this market, think again. The human demand for pretty lies is insatiable. There's trillions more to go around, and the private sector also wants its share of this racket. Enter in the media, Hollywood, the fashion industry, Oprah slash The View slash daytime talk shows, reality TV, academia, and a whole host of other industries designed to lie right to people's faces so they mindlessly part with their money. And that is the industry Amy Schumer is in. Sadly, the free market has determined that Amy's skills as a comedian, though impressive, are outshone by her ability to sell lies. Yes, there are likely thousands, tens of thousands, even perhaps millions of people who would buy her DVD or buy tickets to her shows, but there is more demand from, predominantly, overweight women who want to believe that there is something wrong with society and men for liking and being attracted to skinny chicks. Thus why nobody has heard of Amy's latest comedy tour, if she even has one, but everybody knows how fat her thighs look. The result is the confusion and frustration we're all enduring over the inexplicable popularity of Amy Schumer. She is not an actress of any type, she isn't funny when propagandizing politics, and I am really sick and tired of seeing her fat ass showing up everywhere on Facebook. However, we all have to realize that all of this Amy Schumer all the time show is not intended for us, but rather the mindless sheeple whose lives are so void of meaning they need to live off lies. Schumer's antics are not to agitate conservatives or libertarians. Schumer's showmanship is not to anger men over what they should or should not find attractive. Just like People magazine, the Schumer media blitz is to tell sad, pitiful women the lie that big is beautiful, all women are gorgeous, and they can have it all, TM, etc., etc. This is, of course, a problem. These lies don't come free. Yes, there are the few dollars here or there women spend on magazines or any media outlet willing to publish a body-positive piece of propaganda, and yes, anybody using Miss Schumer as a marketing tool will get those ladies' hard-earned dollars as well. But the real price is these women waste their lives in a delusional world, thinking, Big is beautiful, loud and proud is a noble aim, and men are shallow for not liking overweight, obnoxious women. Which condemns them to living in a delusional world, guaranteeing them no real success with the opposite sex, finding a quality man, or having a healthy, functional family. They will have wasted their one shot in life, their minute spark of an existence in this universe, on lies. And that's a higher price paid than all the taxes paid to governments and all the tithes paid to all the world's religions. If you think about it, it's actually quite precious and full of poetic justice. Almost makes you want to cheer Miss Schumer on. <laughs>